So. More Isaac, huh? Yeah, one more Isaac, do ya? Well, boy, have I got some Isaac for you. <laughs> wow. That's probably the best intro I've done so far. In the 3,000 videos I've uploaded, this is the best intro I've ever done. And that's no exaggeration. I'll, that's no exaggeration. Oh, premium water today, no coffee. Premium water, I've got it in this huge, what is this? Huge Foster's glass, like, huge, like two and a half, two, two of my hands, that's how big it is. Oh, so this, this, this run, let me talk about this run for a bit. This run was great. I had such a good time. Was it good for you? Ah, oh, that's swell. Um, so this run, I did really well, I think. Of course, the second you get flight in this game, you feel invincible and... <laughs> Spoiler alert, that's what happened. I knew I was off to a good start when I picked up mom's bottle of pills. And I scratched my cheek and I looked at my wife and I said, You know what, dear? I think I'm gonna go all the way. I think I'm gonna go all the way tonight. This last boss, man. Piss off! She's the real fast, fast lady. Fast lady. Very clingy. I still maintain to this day, Lust is the clingiest boss in The Binding of Isaac. I mean, she's not doing herself any favors with that kind of behavior. Oh shit, I left behind that heart and I never picked it up. God damn it. I was foolish. Anyway, um, that didn't, that doesn't, that did that, did, that didn't matter. That didn't matter, as you'll see. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to say about this run. <laughs> Take a sip of water. <clears throat> uh, whenever I drink water out of this, this fastest glass, I'm always remember this one time, uh, my uncle, we were at some sort of like family gathering and we were all at some sports, sports bar club thing. Cause that's how my family does it. And uh, one of my uncles was almost completely blackout drunk on vodka. But uh, anytime I, I was like, yeah, I was like nine. I was like, oh, you shouldn't drink so much vodka. And he was like, oh, it's not vodka, <laughs> it's water. And uh, I, I, me being a stupid idiot kid, I was like, oh, oh, it's water. I said this to my uncle, whose one eyelid was half closed and the other one was on its way down. Man, where does Psychonauts 2 coming out? I'm sick of waiting. I'm sick of waiting, actually. Actually. I, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say I'm sick of waiting for games because as has been shown time and time again, time does the better game make time does make a better game and heals all wounds uh, outside of the sphere of gaming and it also makes better games time is great time is just a real all-around swell swell guy oh man i thought i messed water on myself but what is that is that water was it like water from me brushing my teeth? Either way, there's water now on my right leg. So uh, aside from waiting for Psychonauts, uh, I've been meaning to try, uh, you know, I, I was looking to see if they, cause you know how they like to remaster games from a couple of years back now. It's like what Hollywood does with, with franchises that should have stayed dead. They're like, hey, you know what we really, really need? A new Tom and Jerry movie. Wow, you know what we really need? You know what the kids would love? A new Sonic movie? Wow, you guys are geniuses. That's exactly what my nephew told me she wanted the other day. Okay, I came home from a long day at the office and she ran up to me in tears, out of breath, and she's going, Daddy, we need a new Tom and Jerry movie and make it live action too. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what goes through the heads of these out-of-touch Hollywood executives or whatever, but... Who comes up with these ideas and then presents it to someone and they're like... By God, you're onto a winner! 
I can't, I can't physically, I cannot literally imagine how out of touch you must be to think that's a good idea. Yeah, sure, Tom Jerry movie. Actually, I don't even think it's about that. I think it's just about money. But then again, would, would, is this a live action Tom Jerry movie even gonna, I, can, I don't even know if the movie's out. That's how little I care about it. That's how little I care about a lot of movies in general now. I'll see the trailer and I'll be like, Jesus Christ, that looks awful. And then I'll forget about it for the rest of my life until I see a YouTube video where it's like, oh, this, uh, here's 10 reasons why the live action Simpsons movie failed. God, can you imagine a live action Simpsons movie? That sure would be terrifying. And also terrible. You know it would be terrible. There's no way in hell it wouldn't be terrible. It's kind of like par for the course. You take an animated franchise and then you're like, yeah, that's it's live action it up. Like what Disney's doing with its uh, animated classic movies, you know. Uh, Mulan, Sleep, <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. They haven't done Sleeping Beauty. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, Mulan, The Lion King, Aladdin. I mean, come on, man. Did any of those movies actually do well? Were you? The real question is, if you had a, a kid, like six, seven, eight-year-old kid, were you even... Would you buy that movie for them? Or would your kid be bored by the movie? Would your kid not want the movie? Maybe I should do an interview, like go to a local daycare and ask the kids, like, <laughs> go there with my clipboard. Uh, excuse me, a raise of hands, uh, anybody who genuinely enjoyed Aladdin? And, uh, I don't know, maybe everyone would raise their hand, maybe no one would raise their hand, maybe three people would raise their hand. I was trying to decide what I should get in this room, and I ended up settling on uh, Lord of the Pit. Because the wings, you can't beat the flight. Once you got the flight in this game, I always say, it's 90, 90% positive you will uh, go all the way. You'll go all the way. <laughs> uh, that'd be really dodgy, me showing up at a day kiss. Excuse me, ma'am, uh, I'd like to conduct a survey um, related to the live action Disney reboots, remakes, whatever, whatever. What are the terrible movies that come in? I, I, it's like people ask me, oh, you know, have you seen any good movies lately? And I always say, no, no, I haven't. Because all the good movies I've watched, for the most part. <laughs> all the good movies that have ever been made. Like, um, it's, 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 it's even worse with horror movies, right? You'll see a trailer for a new horror movie. Oh my god, like, I don't want to... I want to rip my hair out of my head just thinking about this. They're like, show... The trailers are, are even more formulaic than, than, than they've ever been, in my opinion. It's like, okay, so we'll start it with... Doom, and then we'll have, like, the logo of the film studio. And then we'll have, like, three seconds of black screen. And then, obviously, there'll be audio playing in the background, like some, some girl talking, and she'll be like... I always thought it would never happen to me. <laughs> and then they'd bring up like the, the actual image and then it would be outside of a house just like a normal suburban house but for some reason it's really cloudy because I don't know it's spooky and then it would go to black again and then with the sound effect and then the woman would say something else like but it did and then it would cut to her in a house looking very confused with like three older guys behind her <laughs> <laughs> the Brazzers logo in the, the bottom right. <laughs> no, um, no, it's not. It's not Brazzers. Um, <laughs> and then it would cut to black again, and then this this like piano music would start playing. Oh, geez, that sounds like something from Harry Potter. Wait, I can I can do a creepier piano 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 piece. Mm. Something like that. And then it would cut back to live action. Back to the image again. And then it would be a super, super close up of like one of her eyes. And then you'd see something reflected in the eyes. And then it would go. And then all of a sudden, like action movie music will start to play, which is really weird considering it's a horror movie trailer. And I'd be like. Then would fade to black again, but no this time. And then there'd be like white text uh, in the middle of the screen. It's like sometimes, and then it would fade out, and then the, the image would come back, and then she'd be like, 
in a dark room and the camera would be like behind her looking out from like some part of the room where something should not be and then it would fade to black again and then the next piece of text would be like the worst things and then it would fade and then it would show a, a footage of her like with her mother sitting at like a Ouija table and looking up at the ceiling Ouija table Ouija board on a table and then it would fade to black again and then the white the, the white text would, would come up again and be like wait what was I saying sometimes I can't remember what I was saying but anyway it would say something terrible something terrible and cliche and stupid and everyone in the audience except seven year olds would be like oh my god okay so this is the seven thousandth iteration of this kind of horror movie Listen, I have no problem with bad movies. I love bad movies, okay? But only when a movie is A, trying to be bad, or B, unintentionally bad, and then it's funny. But when a movie is trying so hard to be good and take itself seriously, and it's bad, it's just bad. Like, there's no, there's no redeeming quality from a movie taking itself seriously and still being bad. Ugh. The only exception to that kind of thing I've had recently where I, I watched a movie that a lot of people didn't seem to like was I liked, um, I watched Birds of Prey and I really, I liked them. I mean, I wouldn't say the movie is fantastic by any means, but I'd say that I enjoyed it enough to sit through the whole movie. I mean, I liked it. I liked it. And uh, the people I went to go watch it with, we watched it when it was still in the, the cinema, the, the, the theater. Well, cinema! And of course, uh, the power went out. <laughs> we get to like the ending of the movie. There's probably about seven minutes left. There's a scene where somebody opens up a closet with weapons in it, right? And as they open the closet, the power went out. But it was timed in such a perfect way that it looked like it was just the movie, you know, with dramatic editing. So we, <laughs> we all sat there, the entire movie house, cinema, whatever you want to call it just waiting and then nothing happened for like two minutes and then everyone started talking and I'm like oh my god the power's out again so three or four days later we went back and finished the movie that's right that's right we paid for two two times two times to watch Birds of Prey well we only watched it once technically but the second time we, we showed up late because we'd seen 90-95% of the movie which is fun I mean, it's fine. It's, it's fine movie. I'd say it was probably, for me, seven out of ten. Another movie that was like that. My friend and I went to go watch Venom uh, when it came out, and we were going in expecting this absolute shit show, this this dumpster fire of a movie. And then we we left the movie house afterwards. And we were like, that movie was nowhere near as bad as people were making it out to be. I still believe it to this day. Venom is nowhere near as bad as the critics were making it out to be. It's not a great movie, again, but it's certainly not the worst movie I've ever seen. By a long shot. Seriously. Seriously. I mean, I did laugh. I even laughed at one, one or two points in the movie. My friend laughed, and he's a, he's a cynical son of a bitch. You know, when my friend... Okay. Let's call him... Let's give him a name. Let's call him Friend X. My friend Friend X is one of the most cynical people, or probably the most cynical person I've ever met in my life. And he enjoyed Venom! We left the, 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 the theater, the theater hall. I said to him, that really wasn't as bad as I thought. He was like, yeah, that's 7.6. Oh, with the explosive diarrhea, really? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I said to him, I looked at him and I went, the explosive diarrhea, really? And he looked confused and he, he walked away. <clears throat> Man. But, uh, otherwise, I, I think the, the, the movie industry is pretty much, uh, stagnant. Very stagnant. I think the worst parts of the entertainment industry right now, in terms of lacking originality or just doing anything worthwhile investing time into, whether it be listening to it or watching it or getting into the, uh, like the whole... I'm a, I'm a real fan, you know, like that kind of mentality. It just, it just doesn't exist. And the worst parts of the entertainment industry that fall into this, this category for me is uh, the music industry and the film industry. TV is like still fine because it's not really TV anymore now, is it? It's, it's, I mean, the production is, is still treated 
in the same way as a TV production because, I mean, how, how else would it be treated? But it's now more geared towards the streaming side because, nah, I don't know, people are drifting. TV and libraries are going to be the next two things that go, mark my words, if libraries aren't already gone completely in the area where you live. Yeah, it was first um, <coughs> DVD rental stores. That went, that went pretty quickly. It was like one day, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. It's like one day, the, the DVD rental stores were here, and then the next day they were, were just gone. It was spooky as hell. Because you go to the, 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 the shops, like the little store near where I live, and they've got like a bunch of, they've got like a Thai restaurant, they've got uh, like a normal restaurant, they've got like a grocery store, they've got pet store, they've got a uh, jewelry store, uh, dry cleaners, uh, pizza store, two pizza stores actually, for some reason. Um, although one is closer to the entrance than the other one. And uh, they've got like a used bookstore too. <clears throat> Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, yeah, the DVD rental store. So you'll go, you, I went to the store the one day and then I think two to three days later I went and the DVD rental store was just, the windows were completely covered in like white paper. And there was, they typically have these, these things outside where you could buy used DVDs in like these little shelves. They, those were gone completely. Um, actually, were they buying, buying used DVDs? I can't remember. They were selling some form of DVDs, whether it was new or old or, or used, I don't know. You could buy DVDs outside. Those were gone. Uh, like I said, the windows were covered in white paper and it was locked. The door was locked. Never in my life have I seen that door closed aside from when, when it's supposed to be closed. And it was so sad because I was thinking to myself like, <clears throat> I felt like the other day where it wasn't even DVD rental stores. It was VHS rental stores. Man, I remember like going home with my family the one day we had like, we ordered <clears throat> burgers from some place and we were driving home and we had, I'd rented Ice Age on VHS. I was thinking to myself, you know, there's, there's now, I suppose this is how every single generation feels. But it's like every single generation after me now or after a certain point will never, ever, ever get to experience VHS unless they go out of their way. I mean, it's not like VHS is, like, an experience you gotta have. It's just weird to think that an entire media format is now... It's, 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 it's gone and it will... It won't ever be seen again. I'm sure DVDs will end up that way as well. I don't know, it's just sad. <clears throat> it's just sad when I think about it. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> it's like Walkmans as well, right? I had a Walkman. CD, a CD Walkman, not a tape cassette Walkman. I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I wonder if you were like, to speak to like one of your younger cousins or, or whatever. Somebody in that age demographic and you were like, so I had a Walkman. And they would just stare at you and be like, what are you talking about? See, that's another thing. It's like you can't even just casually use these terms anymore because nobody knows what they mean. It's like, what the hell is a Walkman? Oh, well, you yeah, see, it was like a, a music a thing you can listen to music on. Oh, so you mean like a phone? No. No, not a phone. It's more like an iPod. What's an iPod? Oh, that cuts me deep. Yeah. Although I think more people know what an iPod is. Compared to like, like Walkman, but the i the, the i iPod iPod isn't even a thing anymore, is it? Now it's just iPhones, iPhones, and Android phones, and all that shit. Oh, it's just sad. <clears throat> and the worst part is, it's like when you explain it to them, like, what's VHS? It's like, oh, it was like this tape. It's like VHS, but. On, on tape. I don't like VHS, but it's like DVD, but on tape. Oh. Well, that's stupid. Why would you... 
Why would you use that? Well, you see, it was the only uh, it was the only medium available at the time. DVDs were still relatively new. Not everyone had a DVD player. Not everyone bought DVDs. Now DVDs, you can buy like five for the price that one used to cost. That's crazy. Oh, that reminds me of another sad thing. Like the most the the most popular. Um, well, let me let me put it this way: the the most reliable uh, DVD slash music slash game slash technology store where I live closed down recently and I think it has to do with uh, COVID because obviously not enough people shopping at this place but it closed down completely <sighs> it's so sad because a couple of years ago there was a, there was a, another place that was even better than this place and it closed down and I was absolutely shocked I was devastated and what took its place was cotton on Cotton on took its place. And to this day... Uh, I'll never forgive Cotton on. Mm. I've taken away my precious baby. They even had import DVDs, guys. Import DVDs. For God's sake. How many stores can you walk into and just be like, Oh, I can buy the entire Region 1 series of DBZ on DVD and Blu-ray. No, not many. I don't think. Yeah. Man! Why you gotta go? Why you gotta go? Oh, it was so nice inside as well. So they had like, in the in the front they had the CDs, it was mainly music. And then as you got further into the back, there'd be this ramp that you would climb up. And that is when you would get into the gaming and the merchandise and the import DVDs and the series and all that good shit. I still remember I bought a Noir over there. That was the last game I bought from that place. Uh, I bought from that place before they went tits up. Oh, so magical. I even remember the shirt of the guy that was uh, behind the counter. He had a Metallica. What was it? It was either... It wasn't an album shirt. I th oh no 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 no! It might have been like a King Nothing shirt. Why am I why am I remembering King Nothing? I think it was I might be completely wrong, but I swear maybe it was like a King Nothing. It was a King it was a, it was a, a shirt that was like I remember thinking, huh. That's a weird it's a weird album slash song choice to make a shirt of. Because it wasn't one of their more well known albums, I think. It was like Fuel. Well, I suppose Fuel is like well known enough. <laughs> But, you know, if people talk about Metallica, they talk about Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets or uh, the Black Album or Injustice for All or Death Magnetic or that kind of thing. They never talk about Fuel. I mean, not Fuel. The album isn't even called Fuel. It's called Load, isn't it? Load? Fuel is a song. Shit, was the album called Load? I think it was called Load and Reload. That's it. That's it. That's the one. With the flames on the front. That's it. See? <laughs> I couldn't even remember the album title. Ah. Uh. Or maybe it was... No, it definitely wasn't St. Anger. So I'm not a big fan of the St. Anger album, right? I like some of the songs, like St. Anger itself. Is, I like I like it as a song. And Some Kind of Monster. But the that same friend I was talking about a while back, the cynical one. That's like his favorite Metallica album. St. Anger! It's a good... Man, they should, they should put that song in, like, Repentance. <laughs> That it really get me in the mood, playing Isaac St. Anger going on in the background. In the background! My voice. Let me drink some more Foster's water. <laughs> That's a good name for vodka. Foster's water. Ah, refreshing. Very refreshing. Can't beat that glass of water, folks. Man, oh man, oh man. This run. You know when you play these these runs, they go by so quickly, and then when you record over them, you're like, Jesus, it really took this long? I need to speed up. Actually, no. Speeding up in this game is never a good idea. <laughs> Said millions of times. See, the, the speed up being a bad thing doesn't just apply to you getting the pills and the uh, speed up items, even though I just used one. Uh, and it also applies to how quickly you approach the game. So, every time you enter a room, I always say, to people, it's like, okay, for a split second, instantly assess what is in the room and where you can go. Because if there are no rocks and shit in the corners, spend most of your time as far away from the enemies and in the corners. Oh, there's options. 
great. Slowly upgrading the shop. Slowly. Oh, you know, I, I was thinking to myself, speaking of Psychonauts 2 and, and Double Fine, they should really remaster or do like a remake of Brutal Legend. That is a game I feel could have got a sequel. But I think it would benefit from being exclusively open world instead of like the tower. No, what was it? Tower? Do you call the original tower defense game? I mean, it kind of is. Like you build your units and then you gotta defend your, your shit. I don't know. I like to describe Borderlands. Uh, Borderlands? Brutal Legend as like the first, but it feels like an open world game. And then the further you get in, the more it becomes a glorified tower defense game. But that's not, that's not the part I love the most about the game. The, the, I don't actually love the gameplay the most. What I love about the game is everything else. The music, the setting, the creativity. Oh my god, that's, that's like one of the best game worlds I've ever seen. So if they can somehow take Brutal Legend and turn it into an exclusively open world game, that would be incredible. You hear me, Tim? You hear me, Mr. Schaefer? Make that happen. Please. Please make it happen. I think it'd be a great idea. I think it would do really well. I don't know how the original did in terms of sales. Although, based on the fact I haven't seen a sequel, maybe it didn't do that well. Although Psychonauts didn't do too well either, but it, I think the only reason Psychonauts got a sequel was because of how much of a, a cult following it got. I mean, it was it's a, Psychonauts. It's one of my favorite games of all time. So when they were like, hey, I'm not K. <laughs> And they were like, wait, well, you, you want a sequel? Well, then pay us. I was like, yes, please. And then I didn't fund them. <laughs> like, you know what? I really like this game. Uh, I really look forward to the sequel. But you know what? Uh, I'm not going to fund. I'm not going to. I'm not going to donate. I'm not going to donate because uh, I am not financially capable right now. Of course, that was years ago. I could donate now, but I mean, the game is almost done. It's supposed to come out this year. Emphasis on supposed to Because uh, whenever somebody says something is gonna happen in the gaming industry. I feel like the word supposed to Should always be implied instead of this is happening for real for definite for true I, I, My friend I, 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 the same cynical guy friend X. I told him that I was excited for the um, Mass Effect remaster And uh, he's like oh, yeah me too. They're gonna remove the ass shots. And I said to him, God, why? 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 Why would they remove the ass shots? Like, is that really harming anyone? Like, why would you do that and then draw the ire of your audience? Would you could you rather just not like mess with anything other than the visuals? Why is it like when they remaster games now? People automatically assume, with good reason, that something is going to be cut out because it'll offend, like, two people. Really? Are people going to be playing Mass Effect and be like, wow, thank god they removed the ass scenes? No, they're not. No one's even going to think that. No one is going to play Mass Effect and is going to be like, you know what, too much ass. Too much ass shots. <sighs> Blows me away. <laughs> Blows me away. Like, the whole, um... Like the whole Amazon logo change thing as well. That confused the hell out of me because I have no, I have no idea how you could look at that logo and think it looked like Hitler. I swear to God, if I would have got outside and actually asked like two thousand people, "Hey, can can you possibly guess as to what the reason of uh, the, the changing of the logo was?" And I guarantee you, like ninety nine percent of people. Even if I told them it was supposed to look like Hitler, they'd be like, what? Really? No, it doesn't. I don't know, it just, it just confuses the hell out of me. It's so pointless. It's just, it's so needlessly annoying. Just leave it. Just leave it the way it is. If people don't like it, they won't buy it. And the people who do like it are the people you should be aiming for. As the people you should be targeting for, the people who played the originals. They're going to want this game to look better, but they're going to want it to play the same. Unless, uh, you know, you, you come up with a few quality of life improvements. People are always down with those. Like Persona. Like the, uh, the original gets released, and then a couple of years later, the improved version gets released. And then you spend the same amount of money twice. 
Hey, Magdalene, Magdalene, and challenges, challenges. Yeah, so Persona 4, Golden, for example, Persona 5, Royal, I mean, they're just great. Compared to the original, you can't go back to the originals once you played those. Thankfully for uh, Persona 4, uh, the, the, the only version of the game I played was Golden on the Vita. Although there wasn't my first Persona game. My first Persona game was Persona 3, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing, so I ended up just dying very early on and then getting sick of the game. Then I played Persona 4 Golden, and uh, I figured out how to play a Persona game. And I've yet to go back and play Persona 3, although I do want to. God, my neighbors must be thinking, Jesus, doesn't this guy ever shut up? No, no I don't. No I don't. Never. It's my thing. It's my thing. Once I get started talking, <laughs> it would literally take a car accident, a car hitting me to stop me from speaking. And as far as I'm aware, cars don't go through this part of my house at this time of day. Gotta watch out for planes though. Those things will come at you. Those things will sneak up. Those things will sneak up on you right fierce. Right fierce! Be like sitting here playing a game and BAM! Plane. It's so weird hearing planes flying over this house. Because for the longest time because of the pandemic, it was just dead silence the whole time. And it's even weirder hearing planes at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, who's flying at this time? Obviously important businessmen. Businessmen and business ladies and CEOs and people who just want to come here for whatever reason. It's, I'm, I haven't got used to plane noises, is, is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I'm running out of water. I'm running out of Foster's juice. <clears throat> Woo! Excuse me. I think they are selling a Mega Man collection on PS4. I am very interested in that. Like I said, I play the 8-bit uh, adventure anthology. I'd like to play Mega Man as well. Because Mega Man is one of my favorite game series of all time. Like I said, I like playing games that uh, <laughs> make me uh, cry like a bitch in terms of difficulty. And I think Mega Man uh, falls into that category. Especially mm, the early ones. I think. Although the ones that they made for PS3, those were quite difficult as well. I remember struggling to get past some of those stages. Uh, and I also... Oh, excuse me. Gassy. I think it's because I've taken a lot of air when I speak. Yeah. Uh, so I'm also waiting patiently, just sitting here in my chair, twiddling my thumb, patiently waiting for the Cuphead DLC. Ah! Uh. And I know, I'm, I'm very understanding with that game because of how much time and effort it takes to make. I know all games take time and effort to make, but Cuphead, I mean, everything is drawn by hand. That's a different level. That is a different level of commitment and time. Time commitment. <laughs> so I'm, I'm patient. They said it's coming out this year. But I would be okay. I would be sad, but I would be okay if they delayed it. I guess I'll just replay the original. Or the, the base game on uh, Expert, on Hard. Oh god, I, I don't even want to imagine Grim Matchstick on Hard. For, I think the, the hardest boss for me in the game was Grim Matchstick, and then it was the Devil. It was Grim Matchstick, the Devil, um, that, that, that Candy Girl, what's the name? <laughs> that Candy Girl, Bon Bon, then, then it was her, and then it was Carl's Robot. And then, yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised. Like, I didn't actually find Carl's Robot that difficult. It took me a few attempts, but I never got frustrated with it. There was never a point when I was doing that boss fight where I was thinking to myself, I'm never going to beat this. Now, Grim Matchstick. I went, I went through some dark, dark places with Grim Matchstick. See, the problem with that fight is the ending. It's not even the beginning. It's just the little, the flame guys at the end and their sporadic jump patterns. Because it's like they don't jump at you. They jump where you're going? Or slightly next to you, so you gotta jump, and then in mid-air you've gotta... Okay, you gotta make a decision. This flame guy is gonna jump either slightly to the left, or he's gonna jump slightly to the right. And then you've gotta adjust mid-air accordingly. And all the while you've gotta shoot the dragon son of a bitch on the left. Blech. Blech. 
Hey, my mouth. Yeah, my hair is really long. I like to cut it, but I'm absolutely terrified of uh, going to a hairdresser. <laughs> At this stage of the pandemic. So I'm kind of looking like um, a 70s prog rock star. I'll get there eventually. I'll, I'll muster the courage. I mean, the cases are going down where I live. I think yesterday there were mm, like 900 cases, which is pretty good considering what we've been having recently. There was a, a period at, towards the end of last year, obviously with Christmas and all that shit happening, um, the cases rose drastically. But now we've we haven't just stabilized. We've actually been in the best shape we've been in months, which is great. Very happy about that. Oh, thank God I brought the world with me. Now I can see where the um, secret rooms are. Because <laughs> along with flight, you get the flight, you get the secret rooms in this game, you are... You're going to come across some exclusive loot, my friends. You're going to come across some powerful items, or at least a lot of hearts. Which is great. So, uh, my advice for Isaac players... Go for the flight, go for the secret rooms, go for the secret room revealing items like the world. I use the balls of steel there even though I've reached max heart capacity. Very, very smart move. <laughs> ah. At this point I was just so confident, I didn't even care. I was just like, oh well, you know, easy come, easy go. Reminds me of that bit from The Simpsons with uh, the laser security system outside the house. And what was it? The Home of the Vigilante? What was that? Season 5? Episode... something. <laughs> and they're like throwing rocks and shit at the laser security system of the house and then Jasper, that old guy, gets hit in the eyes and he's like, My cataracts. I can see all the beauty of nature. Then he gets zapped by it again and he's like, I'm blind. Oh, well, he's a cool, he's a cool. <laughs> The entire ending of that episode is so good. That's like one of the things I show people who've never watched The Simpsons. Yes, they do exist, believe it or not. I'm like, check out the ending for Home of the Vigilante. It's just so well written and it's funny as hell. <laughs> they find the treasure. It was supposed to be the treasure of Molloy and they're like, that's a piece of paper and Homer's is like, it's mine. And then he reads it out. And then he can't, it's like, I've already used this this time to escape from your jail. And then Homer can't make out the signature, and then Quimby's just like, Keep digging. We're bound to hit something eventually. <laughs> I feel like The Simpsons is really good at showcasing um, the, the mayhem that is the mob mentality of society. Where, like, when in, in Bart's Comet, where they... they, they <laughs> Town wants to like burn the observatory down instead of actually addressing the problem. Like I feel it really accurately represents how stupid humanity can be. I just think that show overall does a really good job of showcasing um, human behavior, both the good and the bad. Ah, here we go, mom's heart. Again. I think I got hit four times during this fight. The first three were basically because I forgot I had to constantly keep moving with this eye on the right here. Other than that, fight went pretty damn smooth. Pretty damn smooth. Flight doesn't really help with this. Because there's nothing to fly over, so... I guess it's just a uh, hard, hard, cold, hard skill, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh... I am very tired. <laughs> why do I why do I constantly record these things the second I wake up? What's wrong with me? I should at least wait a few hours. Wait until I've woken up properly. I mean I did that with the previous video. It didn't really turn out any different any any different from usual, I don't think. Cause I mean I still talk I still am able to talk a lot, regardless of how tired I am. Look at that. Look at how smooth I, I I weave through those bullets. Oh my god, professional, professional Isaac plays. 
love the sound the hog makes in this, this fight. Like the beating and then the, like the juicy, the juicy sound as the bullets get shot out. It's ASMR-tastic. I, I, I honestly think this fight is harder, uh, sorry, is easier than um, just the, the normal mom fight. Like, there's nothing really difficult about this once you know where the bullets go. But that cheeky shot at the end there after you kill it, I love that. I love the fact that they, they put that in. Because if you're on one heart and then you kill mom's, uh, mom's heart and then you get hit, that's death. <laughs> Can you imagine the frustration? I don't think it's ever happened to me though, because I'm just that good. Nice ass again, Isaac. Hey, the robber cement. I love how these endings get progressively more and more terrifying. <laughs> Hey, another successful run with the rubber cement, and I will see you all next time for more Isaac. Woo!